All right, welcome back to our linear regression from a Bayesian perspective video. Um, this is video number four so far, and there'll be several more as we go along here. So just keep uh, watching uh, each one, and you'll get a different perspective on how to look at this. All right, so just as a reminder, Sydney Hobart Boat Race. Um, this happens every Christmas, I think, or Boxing Day, one of the two. And this is the distance that it goes. It's a long way. Go back and watch the other videos. I give a little more detail. Uh, here's the boat that wins the most. And um, we fit a line to this last time. So we've got a line that fits through there reasonably well. Uh, we seem to like it. And what we want to do is get some predictions off of it. Now, remember, this data is, goes through time. So we want to make our predictions into the future. We're not interested in predicting old values, but new values. And that's an idea of an extrapolation, which we'll talk about later. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to use the predictive posterior distribution. In order to create predictions, we need some x values that we want to see what the posterior predictive is. OK? right i mean i gotta predict somewhere what time do i want to have a prediction at in our in our case how many you know we went up through 1997 x could be 2000 2010 when do we want to have this predicted okay uh so what we're going to do is we're going to get uh the posterior predictive which is my new value of y given my new value of x and the data that i've seen it's the integral of the likelihood of a new value under this parameter and under this new x value averaged across all of the posterior distribution okay now you're going to say how do i do this well we have this distribution already so averaging across it is actually not that difficult um really i mean we just take our samples and plug them in and that's pretty much what we do so we get the x new values we want to predict that for each sample of the distribution posterior distribution you're going to take the betas and the sigma squared and you're going to generate a prediction so i'm going to have a new value of y and it's going to be via samples x new is not a sample it's a specific number but these we actually have samples for and we can generate a sample for this one uh, by just sampling. Remember, we assumed it was normal, zero sigma squared i. So I can pull a, a sample, right? I can just plug it in, get a sample for this, and that becomes my new sample from posterior distribution. And I already have a lot of these, so I'm going to get a lot of these, okay? And then we can summarize them as we would any samples, okay? Just depending on what we're looking for. Okay, so here's an example for our uh, posterior predictive distribution. I'm going to go back to 1995. I actually am going to predict in the past because I want to see if it kind of fits the data or not. And I'm going to go all the way through 2010. Our data starts at, stops at 1997. Okay, so here's where we're going to predict our new values. We're going to make a container to hold them because we're going to go through a for loop. And you have to make a container, and it's going to have uh, however many x values we have is how many columns we're going to have. And the number of rows is the number of samples we have. Okay, number of rows in that chain's one. If you don't know what these are, you might want to go back and watch the other videos because we actually are going to uh, show you how to get these. I don't want to go through all of it in this video. Okay, so then we're going to loop through all of them and store them off. So I'm going to say, okay, here's chain's one, beta zero. Give me the ith observation and or ith sample. I'm going to put that in beta zero temp. I'm going to pull off beta 1 i from chains uh and I'll store that in b1 temp i'm going to do the exact same thing here i am going to get the sigma squared s1 temp and then i'm going to make an e1 temp so it's going to be a normal this is where that likelihood comes in that l this is where that is uh so we're pulling a, however many predictions we have mean of zero and well in r you need to put in the standard deviation and we have variances so we just take the square root of it put it all together beta zero temp beta one temp times our x values that we're going to predict at plus our error okay and that's where we're going to be stored in that y1 pred okay so here what we're going to do first is we're going to create a base plot with room for my predictions remember it's going to go out to 2010 uh, because I said it's going to and I don't know how far down I need to go if you looked at the other plot it kind of cut off right here at the bottom 
And since this seems to be going downhill, I want to make sure that there's plenty of space. That's where I have these X limb and Y limb. Okay, so I'm going to put in my first prediction sample. Okay, and notice the samples are laying down in the data set. So one row is one sample. And the sample goes from 1945 to 2010. And notice it's not a straight line. Why? Because we put noise into it. Okay, so this would be one possible path that the data could have taken. Okay, because remember these errors are random. And that's what we're trying to simulate is these random errors along the way. Okay, then I would add this purple line to it. Notice I have one more line here or one more curve going through here, or whatever you want to call that, uh, new data. Now, what would it look like if I dumped all the data in? And I can get a picture for that. So there you go. And you can barely see these little blue dots in there. That's the actual data. And you can see this is not that useful. Or is it? Well, it actually is, because if I look at it in this direction, in the Y direction, I can get the quantiles out of this data, right? I have these samples. I can get the quantiles out of them, and that will give me my interval, and it'll also give me a new uh, equation of a line, because I can use the median. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to take Y pred. I'm going to go use 2 because I'm going down the columns. So I'm going to have one number for each column. I'm going to use the quantile functions. I'm going to get 0 0.025, 0 0.5, and 0 0.975. So I'm going to have a lower bound, a median, and an upper bound. And then I'm going to plot them. Okay, so I'm just going to add them right onto my plot. So here's my data that I've set up. Here's my, the first one is the median because it's two. Uh, the, the second one is the lower bound and then the upper bound. And this is what it looks like. And you can see it has a little wiggle in it because this is based off of sampling. It's not going to be perfectly straight because we're making a new prediction at each of the X's versus predicting a new line like we did before. Okay, so before we predicted the coefficients, got the medians of those, and that defined our line. Here, our line is defined by our predictions, uh, and that's very different. And we have nice intervals, and notice the intervals don't do too bad. One, two, three, four, five are outside sort of our predictive intervals. Uh, but we do have them, which is great. All right, so how good are they? So what we're going to do in the next video is I'm going to go out and get some of this data, and I'm going to plug it in, and we'll see how well we predict. Now, in general, you really shouldn't predict too far out beyond the bounds of your data uh, for various reasons, but one of the big reasons is you don't know what happens out of here. And at some point, if you take the line that you've gotten before and solve for where it crosses the x-axis, you know, one of those ninth-grade algebra tricks, uh, problems, uh, you will find, I think by like 2051, it's supposed to take negative time to run this race. So uh, if you extrapolate out too far, you could look like an idiot. But anyway, uh, we'll worry about looking at this in the next video. So I will see you there.